What's up, college football fans? Don't forget to check out and order your copy of Stiff Arming Football Myths, our latest football game plan book. So go on our website at footballgameplan.com slash books and get your copy. We have these available in paperback as well as in PDF form. Welcome to footballgameplan.com, where football makes sense. I'm Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook, bringing you a special edition of Film Session with the Czar, where today I'm actually going to turn over the remote control to head football coach at Fordham University, Joe Moorhead. So let's go inside the film room to get coached up on one of the Fordham Rams' best passing concepts. Okay, transition from uh, the work on the board and the installation of the play uh, for a meeting. We're now going to go to the film and uh, look at a uh, three-year cut of our drawback scissors concept uh, in game action. So uh, starting off here in a three-by-one formation, which we talked about the concept of it, front side one for the field, we'll have a 14-yard take to post. Front side two, we'll have a 12-yard corner. Front side three is responsible for the flat. He's on the line of scrimmage, so we will have a four to five-yard flat route as opposed to him being in the back room where he would have a swing. And once again, the defining characteristic of the flood concept is putting three levels to the sideline. Post, corner and the flat. Backside, all right, we're looking to have a 12 yard dig and a five yard read. Okay, and once again, access to the field being pop zone coverage, we're working one, two, and three. Cloud to the field, we're coming backside and we're working the read dig combination. All right, so front side one, he's got access, he's going to take two posts, run a skinny go, or a skinny post to the inside shoulder of the corner. And the term we use there is what? Blow the top off the coverage. So he does a very good job there, taking two and blowing the top off the coverage. That's our first read, he's covered and he's done his job taking two. Now we are looking to high low the flat defender. So the quarterback off of his next pitch is gonna to throw to the, to the corner route, unless he's taken away by the flat defender. If he's taken away by the uh, flat defender, then we're gonna drop it down to the flat. So as you can see here, we're three and one to the post, no post. Second pitch, we're going to the corner because the flat defender's playing low. Had the flat defender dropped out, all right, we're gonna go back side to the flat route. We have no cloud in the field. We do get the dig read concept backside. He's getting shut off here. We really don't like that. But as you can see from the concept of this route, uh, we did get a good game to Brian Wetzel, three yard thousand, three year thousand yard receiver. We are all lead guys, so he did a good job there. All right, so now we go against Lehigh, once again from the 2012 season. Okay, three by one still, front side one, front side two, front side three, back side one, back side two in the backfield. Front side three on the line of scrimmage. He's got the flat, back side two in the backfield, he's got the read. All right, so we're looking to insert three levels on the sideline. He runs a skinny go, all right, through the corner, all right. So the thing here that is, that is not good is what we talked about. On our take two post, if it is one high, we don't want to run the post, because if he runs the post, he's essentially passing him off right. uh, to the middle safety, and then he can drop off and play the corner. So now with one high, we want this guy to run a go through the outside shoulder of the corner. So he's got to have his eyes up and see the middle of the field. Okay? So right there, it's not good. We don't want to run the post because of what happens here. All right, he's passing that off to a, to a middle safety. All right, now we, now we go and say, all right, he's blowing the top off the coverage. Where's the flat defender? Well, we do a pretty good job squeezing the ball in here right now. We talk about our quarterback making high percentage decisions. Ryan's a good receiver. His angle's a little bit flat. We talked about our inside foot at 12 yards, planting at 12, mm -hmm. and then the angle taking us to where we want to go at 45. We're a little bit flat on our angle here, and when you're short on your depth or you're flat on your angle, you're not creating the separation you want between the second and third level of the stretches, and consequently allowing that guy to play both. I was about to say you can play both, and, and so right in here, if he just drifted a little bit you know, two steps back, he's underneath that rock. Yes, correct. Ryan does a good job squeezing this thing in here. We'll take it. We're not going to tell him it's wrong. But the higher percentage decision based on the look, if you ask who is the flat defender playing, is he playing the corner, is he playing the flat? Mm -hmm. As you can see there, getting it to your multiple time All American tight end who's <laughs> right. camp with the Chiefs now, you don't mind getting it to Danny in the flat and letting him work. And then the same thing backside, you can see we do have dig read combo. All right, if we do get plowed to the field, we're going to go backside to the dig in the read. Okay, so good play there, good completion, higher percentage decision maybe to the is to the flat, and the the front side one can do a better job blowing the top off the coverage right. and not running a post against a single high zone look. Because he, if he blew that coverage off the off the top, then that guy had Wessel had more room 
have to get absolutely the core can't fall back that fall right. back on the second level. All right, what you're going to have here is a tremendous illustration of why we make this an access no access play. So once again, from the 2012 season, we say we're going to the field unless we don't have access, unless it's a cloud. Mm -hmm. In this clip right here, Lehigh's going to roll down and they're going to play a cloud to the field. So he's going to play a cloud and then they're going to roll to thirds over top of it. And when they roll the thirds over top of it, okay, that takes away our front side stretch. All right? There is no flood because they shut it off. But what you're doing is allowing to get a, a, a uh, high-low read on the backside backer. So as the quarterback drops back, he's reading through the goalposts. He sees the safety rotate to the center field and this guy getting off the hash. So now we don't have access to the field. The post stays on, we run our flood and we could get it to the flat. But what we're saying, the higher percentage decision, when we have cloud to the field, is we want to get the high low right, with the read and the dig. So right here, you got one, two, three, four, five defenders to the trip side of the field. All right, and you've got two to the backside, more specifically, uh, the Will linebacker. So we're looking to high low him. All right, CJ does a decent job there getting out, understanding we need to affect him. We want him to get the five and then pull that guy out of it. Right. If that guy had just continued to drop, we'll throw CJ the ball. He plays low on it, and as you can see, the window on the dig, it begins on the inside shoulder of, of that guy and ends at the inside shoulder of that guy. So this is where we want to throw the ball. If he takes it away, then we're going there. So it's one to two to run the throw away. Okay. So this is a great illustration of having no access to the field because of a cloud, the quarterback seeing it, getting backside on two hitches, all right, and pumping the dig in there for, for, a, uh, for a first down. Dang. And now you can see this is you can see it good from the backside here. You're talking about reading through the goalpost and keying the backside safety. He sees that guy rolling the center field and through through our coverage recognition. Great job by Coach Ryan and Ryan seeing that we're going backside, all right, shading it. We talk about throwing it right off of his ear. All right, and, and, and we want dig balls to the boundary to be caught on or near the hatch, one yard out, one yard outside, either way. All right, so we do a good job there with our ex receiver, Nick Tower. He made it really pretty quick. He did, and that's, he, we're, like you said, it's, it's something that we're very uh, you know, cognizant of. Okay, so right here, all right, we're getting a three insert strong look. All right, this is one where we're a little bit luckier than good. All right, so we'll pass this one up. Yeah, that's not a good clip. Okay, all right, so here we go here. Okay, once again, cloud in the field. All right, so we should be going backside here because we have a cloud in the field. Oh, we dump it off. So this is an instance right here where you see, all right, and hey, there's gonna be good clips, there's gonna be bad clips. We see the cloud in the field, mm -hmm. we don't get it, all right, because we can't get the stretch, all right, and then we would be high-lowing this guy backside of the boundary, and there's where the dig window starts. I right. think Peter may see that this guy's so far off and he's falling out of there, and obviously, like I said, it's great to get it down to Danny in the flat. All right, he runs someone over. Make a couple people miss, right, and do what he does. That's not a bad a bad idea either. But right. from the construct of did we have access to the field, that the read should have been taking us back south there. Okay. Yep. Yep. All right. Here we are in the playoffs two years ago against Towson, the three by one formation. They're in a two high shell to start with. We do have access to the field. All right. We should have a take two post here. We should be running skinny post to the inside shoulder of this safety. Take you two out of there. All right, some teams switch it off, some teams chase it. Oh, I'm sorry. As this rolls to one high now, pre snap three, post snap confirmation, now this should be a what? It should be a go to the outside shoulder right. this one high. Okay, so he doesn't. So we blow the top on the covers. Not quite as urgent, right. as urgent. What we want to do, the term we use there is step on his toes or touch his belt. If you can touch his belt or you can step on his toes, now it's time to take the outside go, or now it's time to run the post. If you want it, if you, Make your move prior to stepping on his toes or touching his belt. That guy's going to be able to fall off and make a read. All right. So assuming that this the top is low off the covers, now we're flying the flat defender. All right. The flat defender's low. All right. So we're going to throw the run there. Once again, he sets the angle on the route, and the term we use is the quarterback puts a tail on it. So he throws it down as necessary right. based on where this guy is. So once again, you can see the structure of our concept. One, two, three levels to the sideline, and had they gone no access to the field, all right, there's your high level of the boundary off the wheel. So this is an excellent application. Again, it's a true cover three low here, all right, getting what we want. Once again, from a fundamental and technique standpoint, we need to run that through him. All right, that's the puppy there, and then we need to run us a little bit higher angle there. All right, the side from that is pretty good. If you look at Michael's footwork in the pocket, three, one, two, Throw. It's time, right? Time, 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 time. Throw. So as far as like where he placed it, yeah. because if he didn't, you know, it's so he pulls it out. He puts right. a tail on. So that's a good job there. 
All right, so here we are against Mihai in 2012. Oh, here we go. Top of the field again, so this should be taking us back side. Mm -hmm. All right, once again, you know, sometimes uh, <laughs> it's better to be lucky than good, but uh, what Michael sees here, to me, it's hard to differentiate. Is that guy playing top? This is a very, I don't know how you would explain it. Right. Kind of, uh, you need a beat. You need covers on. Mm -hmm. That being said, he stays on the scoreboard. It's three and one here. Three and two here off of the flat defender. Now, I don't know who the flat defender is here, but I know he's open. So at, at a certain point, you've got to trust the guy pulling the trigger in. For a guy who threw over 70% for two years in a row, mm -hmm. you know, the numbers say that he, he's making pretty good decisions. So once again, three levels to the sideline, and you get a little bit of a cloudy look there, and you can see the structure, uh, you know, get what we need to get done. Okay, against Holy Cross in this past season. All right, so we have two hot, three snap, three post snap recognition. Three snap tips, post snap confirmation. Two hot to start with. Uh, we get corner pressure to the boundary, which tells us to throw into a single hot one. So if it's one high, we should be running go through the outside shoulder. We'll have our corner, we'll have our flat. Okay, the go is covered. All right, actually, they do a really good job with this. Uh, it's, a, it's a nice coverage mix up by Holy Cross where they're running the uh, strong safety with two and then matching uh, three to the flat with the linebacker. So this is a little bit different. It's not man under, uh, but they're doing a good job mixing up. But what, what Marcus does here is he has leverage. So he stems, he pushes, he gets vertical, he leans and sticks. All right, and then we're able to get it to him on the side. Right there. So right. that's, that's a good coverage change up by Holy Cross with Michael sticking with his rules. He's there on top. All right, Lafayette this year. All right, three by one, two high pre snap. All right, goes to three and starts strong. All right, so now we're in good shape here. All right, so we don't have a pile on the field. We have access, it goes to one high, so we should be running the go here, not close. Good, much better job by the bucket. Mm -hmm. All right, flat defender, and same here. They're, they're, they're trying to run with him. Ryan does a good job getting vertical, dipping the ripping. All right, reestablishing his route. All right, and then playing and getting out of it. All right, and a good actor to follow up on the side. All right, against uh, Sacred Heart this year in the playoffs. All right, pre-snap, they do an unbelievable job defensively. They do, they do a great job. All right, so I'm not sure what the coverage is. It's sometimes hard to tell what they're playing. Mm -hmm. uh, so Michael is seeing this as man-to-man, -man, which is great. Okay, as we talked about, man override zone. So when it's man-to-man, -man, we're looking for our runaway routes. All right. So Michael knows that our runaway routes are the corner, the flat, and the dig route. So right now we say off the matchup. So Michael felt that that was the furthest off coverage and this was our best matchup. So off the three steps, one, two, three, two hitches, one, two, backside, or then the back and dig All right, so that's the, the whole once again. Same, same job. So when we talk about under key factors and safeties, you can see with these guys blitzing and these guys moving horizontally, that's an under key to the quarterback that it's some type of man underneath coverage. Okay. We say backers moving away from the line of scrimmage or one moving forward and one moving away is some form of zone. Backers moving forward or horizontally is telling us that it's some kind of man. And then once you see what the under coverage is, then you're adding to the rotation of the safety. So we tell our quarterbacks, you really don't need to see the corners. How the backers drop in conjunction with what the safety rotate should tell you for the most part what the coverage is. Right. So Michael does a really good job here under keeping the backers to the safeties Knowing where his runaway route is off the two inch, put it on safe. Okay, the Sacred Heart from this year, uh, trips formation. So, once again, the concept doesn't change. Whether it's a tight end, whether it's an S, or whether it's the back, front side three is responsible for the flat. And this is the clamp coverage that we talked about, right. where we, we can tag it. We did not tag it here. So, essentially, what happened is, as we talked about, he's got him in the end. These two are playing in and out, oh, right. Right? In and so he's going to, he's the first outbreaker, so he's going to take him. Now, Ryan has leverage on the corner because this guy's the inside of him. So he's taking the first outbreaking cut, he's taking the first inbreaking cut. They're acting like that guy's not even on the field, so just run an outside go. So we come through, we've got our leverage, Michael puts it on him, and Ryan does what he's done. Make people miss, we're blocking down the field. All right, we end up with the first score of the game on a good scissors concept. Once again, same thing. Even though they're taking this guy out of the equation, you're still high low in the flat defender. All right, so you blow the top off the coverage, you have identified the flat defender. He's playing low, so we're going to throw to the, uh, 
to the second level of the stretch. How often do you see teams got a man for that? Uh, either in clean coverage or a three, what we call three insert strong coverage, mm -hmm. where it's a cover three construct, but two of the three underneath defenders are to the two front side. Okay. And in, uh, in some man under concepts, we see people try to get into a two or three against us. A little bit late there, but the same thing, Brian Zagel allowed it to be you know, a, little, a little short. So that's a good play there. Okay, against Temple two years ago, one of you know, our biggest wins in school history, defeating you know, a BCS team that lost to Central Florida on the last play of the game, and Central mm -hmm. Florida went on to beat Baylor in the bowl, bowl game. So, uh, you know, we just follow our rules. It's too high, we have access to the field. Buck does a good job doing what? What, what did we define the post as? They take what? Take, take two. Take two, all right? So now we identify the flat defender, all right? The flat defender is technically back guy, right? We believe that the inside linebacker should be able to run the front side too. So right now, the rule is, is the post open? They didn't switch it off, and he takes two. Where did the flat defender play? He played low, all right? We got to throw the ball over top of the over top of the linebacker here. So Michael does a good job once again on the footwork. One, he actually throws it off a one inch. He's a little bit early, but he does a good job there. Because these guys have some, some kids up front that can really get a rush. So, uh, like I said, this is, this is talking about you know, finding moments of our program over the past three years. It's going to certainly uh, fit that bill. Yeah, we can do that here. Yeah, we have a little bit of that here. Okay, so now here it is. We talked about this on the board, the unique thing of our kids understanding concept as opposed to memorizing routes. The X who normally plays in the boundary, when we go into this formation, he becomes field number one. Right. The Z who normally plays field number one now becomes two. And the H who's normally field two now becomes field three. The Y, who was either front side three or back side two, is now back side one. So the concept doesn't change. If you understand it, if you understand the concept of the route, as opposed to memorizing what your position plays, it should matter. We should be able to plug in anyway. So now it's go for post, day two post, corner, flat. Danny should have the dig. CJ's backside two. Right, he's gonna have the rebound. Okay, so now they're in a fire zone look here with a one hot look. So Sam should be running the go, not the post. Buck steps in. Right, so Sam should should be running the, the go through 24's outside shoulder there. Right. Okay, so we're assuming the top's going off the coverage there. All right, so now we're high on the defender. He's playing the flat, so it should be off of three and two. One, two, three, one, two, ball. Roll it down. All right, good job there by Buck. And as you can see, Danny there, not adverse to being backside one. He understands the concept of the route. It's a big read backside. And we're not going to get into the protection part of it, but CK's responsibility for the top, so we don't get him out. Okay. Actually, I think oh, no, we go front side here against cover two, which we really don't want to do. All right, so this is another instance of where should the ball go here? Okay, because we're in an empty formation, mm -hmm. when we get plowed in the field, this thing stays on, and technically versus cover two, you're going to have a hard time completing this. Right. The reason I don't like it is because what ends up happening is if you don't get a good, if you outside release and he gets hands on you, or you inside release and he funnels you, have a difficult time blowing the top off the coverage. So when that route gets disrupted from going back to 2008, this route ends up breaking before he blows the top off the coverage. That's why when we get the cloud to the field, we say, you know, sometimes it happens like this and you're better to be lucky than good because the flat defender falls out of there. Uh, and we get it. But uh, ideally what you want to do here because of this is Danny should be running the whip off of this guy, and then we should be high low in the cover two. So as you can see there, everything's devoted to the field. Danny should be whipping off of that guy, we'll throw the ball right there and he'll be able to stop. Now, so once again, we get a good play, is it ideally what we want based on the construct of the play though. So, and you're saying that if he is the outside corner and gets a hand on him, essentially he's gonna bump those two guys into each other. Either into each other or He's going to get downfield before he can get ahead of that. And once again, this is year one of the scheme. So this is a 2012 clip where we're still reverse. You know, as much as we threw at these kids early on, you know, obviously the growing pains that we experienced in that year, you know, we cleaned up as we moved along. This was, a, I think, this was a two-minute drive towards the end of the game, and we ended up scoring. So that was a big burden there. Uh, Sacred Heart again out of empty. So once again. Front side one, front side two, front side three. This is out of zero, one person. Uh, back side one, back side two. All right, so they go. All right, so we're in our free, free skates. All right, they're switching around. They go to what looks like the 
just a straight cover two loop. All right, once again, same thing. Ideally speaking, that's not where we want the ball to go. We want to high load this guy and the ball should be coming here to the end. So once again, hey, please make a mistake. We're not right 100% of the time. He had a lot of confidence seeing the back corner smelling out of there. And that's the one thing that's difficult to report about is, is really determining whether it's a cloud. Because a lot of teams are playing with what I call soft too now. They're mm -hmm. not doing the traditional cloud and stay playing it. They're getting hands on the guy that they don't have a meeting flat there. They're kind of numbing out. It's what right. it looks like quarters. So the quarterback's defense here, you know, that guy is melting out a little bit. Uh, but what he should be seeing is the two Tampa Mike running out of there and see if he's swimming. So we do get a good completion to Bam on the sideline there. Uh, you know, he makes a play, we get a first down. But ideally, as you can see from the structure, Danny does a good job on the whip. Pulling the will out of there, right? right? And Sam's got leverage, and we want to throw the ball right there to the hash to the X. Yeah, yeah, he kept that's a catch run, right? All right, so now we go to our tag routes. All right, so that was our big scissors concept. And as we talked about here, we're going to have our prefix tag. So now, as you can see, this is what we call scissors H. So H tells us who's running the whip. So as you asked the question earlier, this is that three insert strong coverage. As you can see, one, two, three of the four underneath defenders are to the trip side. Right. And what they're doing is they're in and outing two and three. All right. So whoever we tag is the, the uh, Route, so that's the H we call H scissors. So that puts him on the whip. So now he's attracting the flat defender. All right, so now he's attracting the flat defender. We blow the top off the coverage against a single high. And now we inserted the, the second level of the stretch from number three as opposed to number two. All right. All right. So we do a good job there. And once again, Bob Hill is on the defense. We've got we have some epic battles with him over the past three years, but this is a play that we've had some success with, like I said, against this specific cover that we still get our big green concept backside uh, and we're able to free them up there uh, by just having a tag that's still not changing the integrity of the route structure. All right, here it is uh, from 2012 against Lafayette. Uh, they're playing, it looks like a quarter quarter half concept. All right. And this is actually before, incidentally, this is the precursor to us running the work route. This is 2012, when, when we tagged him, the guy ran a flat, he didn't want to run away. Okay. So as, a, as our offense and our scheme and things that we self-scout and kind of uh, look at what we do and how we can make it better, this is a clip from 2012 prior to us changing it to a whip. So as you can see here, the, the uh, result's going to be the same. Right, so top uh, ball. Yeah, well, what was the... I'm not quite sure what was happening here. Uh, honestly, the first read is that he's open. Uh, but you know, like I said, this I think this may have been covered plus by this guy, seeing that that guy should not be flat. But once again, in our three levels, where traditionally on a normal scissors, three on the lines to the flat, we switch their responsibilities to get the corner by number by number two. Brian, once again, as he's done, 89 yard catching off for two big. Was a big play in this game. All right. All right. Here it is against uh, URI from. Okay, so now that, that was a, uh, a prefix tag, so you got a couple looks at that. We have more of those on tape, but now we're going to the suffix tag. Meaning, whoever we tag, so we say scissors X in this instance. You hear the letter after the play, that says who's running the cross. Right. All right, so front side one stays the same, front side two stays the same. There is no front side three. You'll we'll move here in a second. Okay, so now he's going to be the third level of the stretch of the boundary. He knows he's disappearing, so now he becomes backside one. And if he becomes backside one, now the back has to become backside two. All right. Oh, I'm sorry. This was actually a game plan thing specifically to Rhode Island. Normally on this, we put the back here and have them do this, but because they were matching the mic on three to the flat, we knew that he would, this guy would carry two vertical, and then we would get Sam open, because he would carry that, he would chase that, and as you can see here, we get Sam open, beating that guy across the field with no left. Because right. the they're essentially avoiding that zone by chasing uh, the back with the mic to the flat. So our, our integrity of our stretch is the same. Front side one, front side two, front side three. I dig and cross. And, and like I 
as a tenant for you are possible if you keep your speed space. All right, here it is for this year. Uh, this is scissor Y. All right, so instead of the X running the crosser, the Y is on the crosser. He's the third level of the stretch for the field. Okay, if he's disappearing, that tells him he's backside one. Backside one rule, 12 yard dig. Okay, if he's disappearing, he's backside one, that makes him backside two. So he's got the five yard rebound. Okay, so the progression remains the same. We have access to the field, it's too high. All right, so it should be take two posts, which he does. We intersection the flat defender. The intersection is not there with the post. The flat defender is low playing the crosser. All right, and there's a third level, or second level of our stretch right there. Should be out in two digits. One, two, three. One, two, ball. The timing on that route was perfect. He yeah. he sends it up and then two stick. Right. Push, 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 stick. And then once again, you can see we talked about that angle. Mm -hmm. and don't talk about people ask all the time when you do clinics and things like that. Yeah, where is he aiming for? He's not aiming towards anything. He's planning it the depth he's supposed to play that, that his angle should take care of where he's supposed to go to. Right. So we don't, we rarely talk to our guys about what their ending depth is as opposed to what their angle is. Okay. And, and usually the angle takes care of that. I when I say depth, the final depth, but the final depth, the cut depth. As you can see, David Young does a good job there throwing the flat. And really, if you stop this, you would know what formation we were running out of. Front side one, front side two, front side three, back side one, back side two. And, and that's what allows you to uh, run the same play out of the different formations and stuff and get different looks. Uh, that's a good job with Brian there. Uh, and then this was against Army this year, same thing out of two by two in uh, 10. This was scissors pass, I believe, or X maybe. Uh, goes one high, it was X. We get a little bit of log in here, we never get the third level through. Uh, once again, Buck should be running the go, not the post. Uh, but because he does a decent job avoiding him, the flat defender gets lost. Michael does a good job off of one, two, throw the ball to him. <laughs> he get the completion even though we didn't get the third level to stretch over. Uh, scissors wide. There we go. That person like man. Like man, 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 yep, man under. So we're, we said off the matchup with the one on runway runs. One away one, one on runway two, one away three. Alright. He likes the matchup there. Marcus does a good job stepping. One through stick, push, 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 lean stick. Alright, Michael does a good job putting him where it needs to be. And once again, he had no enough. You know, because it's what we call one mile look, or it's man to man, but you have three, two free guys. Right. He come these two essentially have the back, and then whoever doesn't have the back is freed up. So if those two end up getting double teamed, then he would come back. This part of the progression, the ball would end up going there. So it's one to two, the three backer ended up covering him. Now he's got the same coverage ball right there. 